Amen, amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Amen, amen, amen. If you're on this morning, my prayer is that uh, that you have started your day off, amen, with the Lord on your mind, amen. And all I ask is that you just throw a wave, amen, uh, on this morning, amen. I thank God for you all uh, on this blessed morning. Brother Jawan, Sister Clara, how are you, Sister Felicia? How are you all on this blessed and glorious, glorious morning? Amen. Any morning that the Lord opens up your eyes, amen, to see a brand new day, amen, is a reason to give him praise and to shout. Amen. 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 Amen again. How you doing, Sister Clara? Amen. Hey, Sister Beverly. How you doing on this blessed morning, Sister Pam? Good morning, good morning, good morning to all, amen, amen. And so this morning, uh, I know it's a little different, amen, it's way early in the morning, some of us are getting ready for work, uh, some of us may not have to go to work until later, some of us can say, well, pastor, you know, uh, what is work? I've retired, amen, uh, but whatever, whatever category you fall in, amen, we ought to, amen at times get to a point to where we box off some time for the Lord, to let the Lord speak to us and also for us to just praise him and spend time with him. Amen. And so this morning, amen, it's my prayer to lead us into devotion. Just want to show us this morning and also share a word with us on this morning what devotion looks like. Now, we do it on Sunday morning. Amen. Uh, and many people, you know, will have the song, the scripture, the prayer, and the meditation. Um, I want us to understand that's not just the routine. Um, that is done to get us to a point to where we have given ourselves over to God. We've allowed our minds to be taken over by God's spirit. And we've allowed ourselves to get in a mold to where God can speak to us. Amen. And so we ought to uh, have devotion, not just on Sunday mornings, amen, not just on what, Wednesday night, but we ought to do it, we ought to do it on a regular, regular basis, and I'm just going to give this suggestion, that time probably should be when you start your day, why, so that it'll help you, what, with the rest of your day, the Bible talks about Jesus, what, getting away, Getting away from the crowd, getting away from the disciples, getting away, what, in the early morning. Amen. And so he got away so he can, what, he could talk to God and God could talk to him. Amen. And so I'm going to just share real briefly with us on this morning uh, a brief uh, devotion. Amen. And I pray it blesses you on, on this blessed and wonderful morning. Now, I'm going to start with the song. Amen. Now, you may say, well, Pastor, I can't sing. <laughs> you know, if I try to sing, amen, praise the Lord, it won't, it won't sound like you or it won't sound like this one or it just won't sound. It don't matter. Amen. You got a radio. You got YouTube. Amen. You got Pandora. You got all that stuff. Amen. That you can use. Amen. To play something that's going to get your mind focused on the Lord. Amen. And so. I sing because I love to sing, and I, I always try to keep a song in my heart. Amen. Because it's something about it's something about music. It's something about singing a song. What it it allows you to rehearse and replay things in your mind. And when you do it, Amen. In God's will, it reminds you of what the goodness of God. Amen. Your grace and mercy. She brought me through I live in this moment Because of you And I want to thank you And praise you Your grace and mercy brought me through. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Thank you for 
saving a sinner like me to tell the world salvation is free. There were times when I just didn't do right, but you watched, you watched over me, yeah, both day and night, yes Lord, your grace and mercy brought I live in this moment hey, because of you, my Lord, and I want to thank you and praise you too, cause your grace and mercy, yeah, your grace and mercy, your grace and mercy brought me through. Amen. How many of us can testify this morning of God's grace and his mercy? What is that? Amen. His grace, amen, gives us those things that we did not Deserve. We deserve to die. <laughs> Amen. But he what? He sacrificed his life on Calvary's cross. What is mercy? Mercy is not receiving. Amen. Not receiving what we should have gotten. Amen. We should have gotten the punishment that he received. But because of his mercy, because of his love, because of his tender mercies and his loving kindness. Amen. We, amen, can call ourselves children of God. Amen. And praise the Lord. And we just thank God for being God. And I thank God. I don't know about you. I thank God for his mercy, his mercy and his grace. I want to share scripture with us on this morning. Amen. Lamentations chapter number three, verses 22 through 24. Lamentations chapter three, verses 22 through 24. An amazing, amazing passage of scripture. Amen. Look what the word of God says. It says, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. Lord have mercy. Because his compassions fail not. They are, Lord have mercy, they are new every morning. Great, <laughs> great is your faithfulness. Amen. And the Lord is my portion. Watch what it says. Says my soul. <laughs> Therefore, I hope in him. Amen. The grass wither and the flower thereof fadeth away, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you, dear God, for this time. Thank you for this moment, dear God, that we've allotted to spend with you, Father God. Lord, we offer our hearts and minds to you so that you can speak to us. Lord, we, Lord, give what we need to you, Lord, to request those things that we have need of, Father God. We need you every day. And we need you every hour, Father God. There's no time we do not need you, dear God. So we just pray right now, Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, speak to us this morning and have thine own way. We love you, Lord. We thank you and we praise you right now. It's in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior, we do pray. Amen. 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 Real briefly, when we look at the book of Lamentations, we've got to understand Lamentations is a book written by the prophet Jeremiah. 
Now, when you look at Jeremiah, amen, some of us can remember when the old preacher would talk about, <laughs> like Jeremiah, it was just like fire shut up in my bones, amen. And it was talking about the word of God, how Jeremiah wanted to stop, what, preaching and teaching and sharing God's word, amen, but it was, it bothered him not to, amen. But Jeremiah is referred to, watch me now, as the weeping prophet. The weeping prophet. Why, pastor? He wrote a whole book called Lamentations. What in the world does lamentation mean? Lamentation, it comes from Hebrew words that denote a funeral song or a song of mourning. Oh my goodness. So lamentation is a song of mourning based on Jeremiah's experience in his life. Okay, preacher, why would Jeremiah feel so down? Why would Jeremiah feel so low? Why is Jeremiah writing a funeral song? Pastor, who died? <laughs> well, you've got to understand he's writing because it was really the death of a city. Jerusalem was invaded by the Babylonians. And what had happened, he prophesied to them that God's judgment was going to come upon them. And what he went through while he did that brought great grief towards him. Twofold. Why, preacher? Number one, when he preached judgment upon the people, they laughed at him. They talked about him. They teased him. They ridiculed him. And another thing, even when judgment came upon them, even though the people had done all these things to him, he had such great compassion for them that he even wrote this song and prayed for them as well. Look, this is powerful. Amen and praise the Lord. And that's what makes this passage so significant because Jeremiah finds himself in a low point in his life. Jeremiah finds himself at a point where many things that have gone on around him have depressed him, have brought him low, have brought him down, has caused him to cry, has caused him to want to throw in the towel, has caused him to really feel moments Moments of almost despair. But I love, amen, this passage of scripture because Jeremiah shows me that even in your low moments, God will come along to remind you of his goodness. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Why? Because look what he says. He says, through the Lord's mercies, we are not, we are not Consumed. I thank God. Amen. Amen. I thank God for his, for his mercy. What is his mercy? His mercy is his goodness, his kindness, and his faithfulness. Even, amen, praise the Lord, when we may have deserved punishment, even though we've done things to bring harm and consequences upon ourselves, it says, through the Lord's mercies, Lord have mercy. Through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed. So God cares enough about his children to say, even though <laughs> I love you, what? Not because you're all that. Not because you've done everything right. But it's through his mercies that we are not consumed. And all that consumed means is completely destroyed. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Anybody can testify with me on this morning that it seemed as though the things in your life was going to take you out, was going to zap you, was going to take you out of here, had brought you to a point to where you thought it was all over. <laughs> but what? because of God's mercies, you weren't completely destroyed. And somewhere down the line, the Lord reassured you that my mercies are new. <laughs> my compassion is new every single, every single, every single morning. And all that compassion is, 
it deals with a tender love, right? It also, amen, refers to the womb, amen. Even a mother's womb. And the mother's womb represents care. The mother's womb represents nurturing. The mother's womb represents having a compassion and a love for that which she is carrying. And you've got to understand that when we look at the Lord, amen, he loves us. He cares for us. Amen. He nurtures us. Amen. He what? He, he dusts us off when we fall. Amen. He cleans up our scrapes. Amen. He, he forgives us. He, amen. Even when we what? We bring harm <laughs> and hurt upon ourselves. Because of his compassions, Lord have mercy. His compassions fail. They fail not. And I thank God that his love, whoo, Jesus, his love does not quit. Oh, Lord, y'all, that is good. Let me tell you why that's good. His love doesn't quit. His love is not like our love toward one another. His love is not like the love of the world. His love is not a fickle, natural love. His love, amen, fails not. He has compassion. What? He has compassion upon us. And I thank God for being God. Because guess what? Even when everybody, everything has passed out, worn out, run away, walked out, ran out, amen, God remains what? He remains faithful. Look what the word says. It says this. It says they are new every morning. What's new? His mercy and his compassion. Why are they new? Because every morning he gives you to wake up, to see a brand new day, he gives you a fresh start. Amen. So that's why God reminds us in the scriptures. He says this. He says, don't you worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to take care of itself. You understand that today his mercies are new. He's going to take care of you today. He, tomorrow, amen, when it comes, if he allows you to see it, amen, <laughs> new mercies will he, what, bestow upon you. But you've got to understand this one thing, that they are new every morning. Every morning he gives us to wake up is a new opportunity to give him praise, to give him honor, and to give him to give him glory. I'm almost done. Look what it says. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in him. It says, great <laughs> is your faithfulness. And all that means is this. God's faithfulness, right? It's abundant, it's abounding, and it's more than enough. And what is his faithfulness? His faithfulness shows that he's firm. When everything else is shaking, he's firm. When everything else wants to shake loose, he's stable. When everything else, amen, wants to fall over, he's steady, he's consistent, and he is reliable. Amen, praise the Lord. Even though we're fickle, right? Even though we're flawed, amen. Even though, amen, we have several failures in our life, God remains what? He remains faithful. Said, the Lord is my portion. What does that mean? All that means is the Lord, he is everything that what? That I need. He's everything that I can depend on, hold on to, and I can trust that what I need, that God will provide. But look what it says. It says, says my soul. Somebody say that with me. Says my soul. Jeremiah is encouraging himself. Amen. Praise the Lord. I know folks say, don't talk to yourself, but I don't know about you. When, guess what? When nobody else, amen, is going to pat you on the back. When nobody else is going to give you a hello and a high five. When nobody else, amen, is going to reassure you. When nobody else is going to give you a kind word. When nobody else is going to be there to help you through what you're going through. You've got to remain faithful and utter these words to yourself. The Lord is my portion. Ha! Says my soul. God has what I need. Lord have mercy. He has 
what I need. And it doesn't matter what it is. He's got what I need. What I need. And I just want to encourage you on this morning. There's some times when you're going to have to what? Encourage yourself. <laughs> you can't wait on nobody else. Amen. To encourage you. You can't wait on nobody else to reaffirm you. You can't wait on nobody else to give you a push. You can't wait on nobody else. Amen. To give you a word. Guess what? Open up that Bible. Read what God wants to tell you. Read of his promises. Read of his goodness. Read of his grace. Amen. And tell yourself, the Lord is my portion, says my soul. And you've got to get to the point to where you understand, amen, praise the Lord, where you're not reliant, amen, on anybody around you. I love my wife, but can I help you? I can't put all my trust in her because there may be times, amen, where she needs, amen, an encouraging word and she doesn't have one for me and just vice versa. There are times when she may need an encouraging word and I can't give one to her. But if we both understand that we can go to God for ourselves, amen, even when, amen, we're not getting it from anywhere else, we can say the Lord is my portion, says my soul. Lord have mercy. You have got to encourage yourself, amen, in, in the Lord. Look what he says. He says, and therefore, I hope. I hope, I hope in him. Now watch, many a times we use that word hope and we use it in a negative way sometimes, right? But you've got to understand that the Christian ought to walk in faith and in hope. What you mean, preacher? It says this, therefore I hope. But watch me now, <laughs> you got to understand, it's not just a vain hope. It's not just a hope fly by night hope. <laughs> it says, therefore I hope in him. <laughs> what does that mean? I expect God to come through for me. I expect God to grant me some mercies. I expect God to come through for me. I expect God to chastise me when I need him. I expect God to comfort me after he's chastised me. I expect God to come through on my behalf. I expect God to strengthen me when I'm low. I expect God, amen, to come through in my life in the areas that I need him, amen. And I'm walking not in despair, but in expectation that like the old church would say, the Lord will make a way some somehow <laughs> come with me come with me if you can so that hope says that I'm waiting on God <laughs> I'm waiting on I'm waiting on the Lord now watch that's not a, a wait where you're just idle that's not a wait when you sit in the corner and wait <laughs> that's not a wait where you stand at the end of the driveway and wait that's not a wait to say you sitting on the couch and you wait. That's not a wait to say, guess what? I'm not going to do nothing. I'm just going to sit around and watch and see if God going to do something. No, get your behind up, go to work. Get your behind up, wash your face. Get your behind up and go where God told you to go. Get up and trust God going to give you what you need to fulfill your purpose, to what bring glory to his name and do what it is. That he's called for you to do. And while you're doing it. <laughs> while you're giving him your service. While you're going to work. While you're taking care of them children. <laughs> while you're in the grocery store. Amen. While you're with your family. While you're doing the normal things that you do. <laughs> They're wondering why you're so happy. They're wondering why you got a smile on your face. They're wondering why you're not all crying in a corner and hopeless and helpless. <laughs> they just don't know. I'm walking in hope <laughs> in him. <laughs> Lord have mercy. You got to come with me if you can. Saints of God, we have got to make sure we give God what he deserves. Give God his credit. And give God his just due. Trust him to be God. Don't treat him, oh Jesus, don't treat him like 
He's some loan that didn't go through for you. Woo, Jesus. Help me, Lord Jesus. Don't treat him like some car that broke down on you. <laughs> oh, help me, Holy Spirit. Don't treat him, amen, like some doctor you feel didn't do what he was supposed to do for you. <laughs> you got to treat him, amen, as the one who holds the world in his hands. The one who's your portion. The one who has what you need. The one who created the heavens and the earth. The one who woke you up this morning. The one who created the birds, the trees, the flowers. The one, amen, who allowed mankind, amen, to be here on earth. Amen, to fulfill, amen, his will for their life. I, I trust him to be. Trust him to be God. Amen. Don't treat him. Woo! Lord have mercy. Don't treat him. Like something and someone that you normally go to. <laughs> Treat him as God, the God of heaven. When you go to him, go to him knowing who he is. Knowing he's the God of heaven. Knowing he's the God who sent his only begotten son. That whosoever would believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Know him, amen, to be the God who sent his only son, who told us he came to, so that we may have life and have it more abundantly. And I'm not talking about all kinds of cash and, 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 and creature comforts. I'm talking about love, joy, and peace. Lord, have mercy. Trust him to be the God that can take care of your hurt. Trust him to be the God that can take care of your family. Trust him to be the God that can take care of your financial issues. Trust him to be the God who can take care of your enemies. Trust him to be the God, amen, who can take care of the situations that you find yourself in. Amen. God just wants you to treat him as God. Wait on him. Understand that he is your portion. And trust him to be who he is. God bless you, saints of God. Love you, amen. Didn't mean to keep you this long, but it got good to me. Amen, praise the Lord. I pray to God that you were blessed. I pray to God, amen, in some kind of way, amen, your day has started, amen, and now you're ready to go out and face, face life challenges, amen, not defeated, not, not knocked down, not in despair, but guess what? Understand that the Lord's mercy his compassions are new every day. And if that's the scripture you read every morning, amen, praise the Lord. But can I help you? Don't stop there. There's so much God has promised us. There's so many things he's assured us of. Amen. That we can trust in. Amen. So God bless you, saints of God. Amen. I kept you longer than I wanted to. Lord have mercy. But I pray to God that you were blessed on this day morning. Amen. And praise, praise the Lord. Let pastor pray for you right now and I'm going to let you start your day. Amen. On today. Let us pray. Lord God, thank you. Thank you for your grace, mercy, love and truth. Thank you for being so kind and merciful unto us. Lord, even when we're so undeserving of it, allow us to go through this day trusting and leaning and depending on you, Father God. Lord, leaning not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledging you so that you can make our path straight, dear God. Touch right now, dear God. Lord, I pray you touch minds, touch bodies, dear God. Lord, touch hearts on this morning. And Lord, I pray right now, Lord, that you would touch, Lord, like only you can. And Lord, do what you have to do, Lord, to get us to a point to understand, Lord, that you are God. And you are God all by yourself. We thank you for this morning. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your love. It's in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior, we do pray. Amen. Amen. I want to encourage us, amen, to spend time in that word. And you may say, Pastor, amen, I, I can't study the Bible like you. I, I can't, you know, teach the Bible like you. It ain't about teaching the Bible like me. It's about opening up the word of God 
looking at the word of God and allowing God to minister to you through the word. Amen. There's different translations of the word. Amen. That you can use to help make it simpler to read and understand. So whatever translation helps you. Amen. Use that translation to help you to understand God's word. So you can reflect on it. So that you can internalize it. So that you can pray on it. And pray according to his will. Not just what you want. But according to what God has what promised. Amen. And allow yourself to what speak to God. But what? Sit quietly and allow him to speak to you. God bless you, saints of God. See you later. Love you. Amen. This may not be the last time we do this. Amen. Y'all let me know. Amen. God bless you. Love you real good. You hear? Amen. I love you. God love you. And ain't nothing you can do about it. Bye, y'all.